maybe you've come across the game FizzBuzz before. It's a really simple kind of kids game for checking divisions. Uh, you count the numbers off, one, two, three, four, five, and if it's divisible by three, you say fuzz, fizz. If it's divisible by five, you say buzz. If it's divisible by both, you say fizz, buzz. So the sequence is one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 13, 14, this buzz. That's the first 15 terms, and you can continue on if you want to test your division to the limit. Uh, and this sometimes gets asked as like an interview question for, uh, are you any good at programming? Can you solve this problem? Can you get a computer to spit this sequence out? It's almost a trivial task, but it's kind of testing how you go about problem solving. What do you do? How do you set it up? And how do you check your work at the end? So the very simple way of doing it in Excel is to simply do one, two, let's drag that down to 15. And then we're going to test each of these in sequence. So I'm going to start with an if, and if uh, I need to check the, divis uh, the divisors of this and see the remainder is zero. So I'm going to use the mod function. Uh, I'm just going to test cell C1 and divided by three times five. Um, that's to make sure that we do 15 first and we'll play about with it and show you why we might do that check that it's zero and if it's true we type in this buzz. uh if it's false we're going to test it again uh so if mod c1 well if just three if that's true we're going to say fizz uh finally we'll check um oops hit tab at the wrong time mod of that uh and five equals zero. Let's make sure that's correct. Uh, buzz. And then C1. So if all else fails, we'll just spit that number out. Just check this. Here we go. I have you know, forgot to put that in. That should be equal to zero. Yeah, that'll be fine. And it's spat out the right number. So there you go. There you get to the correct answer. There's your formula. But this test is really not about getting the right answer. It's how you go about it. How do you structure it? Uh, if you are writing up in computer code, how do you comment it? If you're doing a data exercise in Excel, how do you format it for your end user? How do you give your user control over the sheet that you present them? So you might do some uh, quite complex data analysis at some point uh, as part of an interview in a spreadsheet. And how do you spit that out to you? Um, uh, the manager who's asked for it. That's what the test is actually about, uh, not getting the right answer, as it were. So one quick thing we're going to do, I'm going to test, is this the correct answer? Well, I know this is the sequence I need to uh, produce. So I'm going to test, are these equal to uh, my output? Well, true. Is it true in all cases? Yeah. So let's just put an and at the bottom. Fill that bold it and highlight it just so I can see it. Uh, so if I'd left in that mistake earlier, you see it doesn't quite work out. It just fizzes, fizzes, fizzes everything. Uh, so it's false. So I've clearly messed up my code there. I need to zero. Um, if I did it three, then five, then 15 here, if I did these in the wrong order. Also, it doesn't work, but I've got this big false here telling me that it doesn't work. Okay, so now uh, let's do it in a bit more of a fancy way. Uh, it's a slightly more complicated way, but this is about structuring your output to have a lot of control over it. And it's a little bit more kind of computationally, programmatically uh, elegant, I suppose. So we are going to, um, label some things up. So I want a divisor, the B divisor, and I'm going to do a word, B word, because we've got kind of two things here, A and B. We've got three, and we've got five, and we've got fizz and buzz. So three, five, fizz, buzz, uh, and tell you what, we're going to put out a length. How many do we want to spit out how many sequences? So this uh, is going to be the input that maybe a user gets. So I'm going to come up to formulas, create from selection. Uh, all the names are in the left column. OK, that now if I type a device, I'm going to get three. If I do B word, I get buzz. 
So these are going to be used. Now, one thing we can also do here is we can do sequence. So if I do sequence uh, the length here, I'm going to get the numbers 1 to 100. So we're going to start not necessarily with there, but I'm going to do a new function called let. Uh, this allows you to label things within a function and then reuse it. Um, so I've already got some named ranges here. So this is another instance of doing this. Uh, so name one, I'm just going to call this x, and x is a sequence from 1 to 100. And usually the final thing in let will be, well, what is the function well, that you're going to calculate? So I've created a variable called x. x is now a sequence from 1 to 100. I'm just going to spit that out. Okay, great. That's so far so good. But what I want to do is generate a couple of new tests. So a... Well, I'm going to use that if statement. So I'm going to do, or at least the logical statement for it. So if mod uh, of x divided by a divisor, there we go, that's number a. Then I'm going to make a new one called b mod number x, b's divisor, there we go. Now we can talk about the function. I'm just going to put in x. It'll still spit out 1 to 100, so clearly that's still working. So, uh, also, it's worth pointing out that uh, this still says false. We haven't reached the right answer yet. So, what I'm going to do is be in those if statements. So, if, well, a times b is my logical test. So, um, oh, actually, I'm going to change this to equals 0 and equals zero. Uh, so those will spit out true and false. Um, true and false are also are represented as one and zero in Excel. So if you do A times B, if this is true and this is true, it'll uh, interpret it as true. Uh, so that's a way you can do an and statement. You can use the and function, but that doesn't play well with spill formulas. And I don't know whether it's by accident or design, uh, but this is the hack around it. You do A times B for and, A plus B for or, uh, and so on. So if that's true, I want to put out A word, uh, word and B word, concatenate those together. And if it's false, well, if A, I want A's word. If that's false, I want to check if B, uh, then B's word, and if all of that fails, X, then clear off, a, clear off all the brackets, make sure I've finished all of that. And there, lo and behold, in a single line, we've got as many out as possible. We've checked that it's true because we're checking it against, or at least the first 15 terms, against a known set of data. So we know it's correct. We know it's good to go up to at least 15. Um, Oh, actually, that's it. Sequence, let's put the length back in. There we go. Now, if I change that to just 15, it stops here. I can push that up to 500, and the computer will just go forever. I can change the divisors. Maybe I want to change to 2 and 5, uh, 7, 11. There we go. It gets a bit more sparse. Uh, I might want to change it from first to foo and bar but I've given this control over to whoever's going to play with it later. Now, this is obviously, this is just a test. This is kind of a little quiz to see, can you do this? But if you're kind of being interviewed for a programming or a data analysis job, this is the kind of thing they're probably looking for more than just getting the right answer. Uh, are you going to be testing your validity? Check that it's correct. Are you going to be handing a little bit of control to your end user? Yeah. And are you going to be putting your variables in a well-named uh, format? So we don't want to just call this A, uh, B, C, D, or instance, or I, J, K, L. We want to give them descriptive names, almost that it doesn't really need, uh, almost that it doesn't really need comments to tell you about it. So that's how you actually want to approach this sort of problem. Give it plenty of flexibility. Um, name your variables uh, and test it.